Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of the secrets and easter eggs in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. But before we get started with today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you can stay updated for future videos. With all that being said, let's jump into today's video. The very first easter egg I would like to cover in this video is one that I don't believe I've seen covered here on YouTube before. PlayStation's official TikTok account had hinted at an undiscovered Easter egg for quite some time after Rift Apart's launch. I know something you don't. I know something you will never know. One user, Mr. Grimm, had discovered that the plaques in Zerkies had a special message hidden within them. PlayStation's TikTok account had actually confirmed that this was the Easter egg that they were hinting at. A few of you have solved this Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart Easter egg we posted. I know something you in Zerky's Gastropub and the Battleplex, you can find a bunch of taxidermied heads with these nameplates on them. But what language are they in? If you guessed the Lombax language, you'd be wrong. These nameplates were designed by Insomnia Games artist Kristen Boris, and when deciphered in a robot language, they read, you were not supposed to decipher this message. When you first arrive in Zerky's, you can find a Kreger bear here. It's said that this is a reference to Craig Goodman, who used to be an artist for Insomniac Games who had passed away in 2019. Speaking of other formal Insomniac Games employees, we can also find a Dan Johnson action figure here, yet another employee who had unfortunately passed away in 2006. Insomniac Games typically hides a Dan Johnson reference into almost every Ratchet and Clank game. If you check out the arcade machines that the pirates are playing, we can notice that they are an all-for-one arcade cabinet with them playing the full game. And in the corner over here, you can spot an Insomniac Games logo. The last thing you'll find in Zerkies is that this sheep is actually Chairman Drek from the 2016 remake of the original Ratchet and Clank. Wow. What do you think, Nappy? Should we run? <laughs> <laughs> Sheepinator. One of my personal favorites. If we head over to Nefarious City, we can spot a ton of Megacorps logos. This is simply a reference to the main corporation within Ratchet and Clank going commando, and nothing more, unfortunately. On the pirate map, you can find a dog holding a key in its mouth. With some pirates behind bars, you can hear the pirates trying to bribe the dog for the key. The layout of these characters and the dialogue is a very clear reference to Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Listen here, puppy. He helped release me. I shall give ye this nice succulent bowl. Tis beautiful, eh? All right. I see tis not an entirely fair trade. What if I give you this bone and some head scratches? You try the hard bargain. This bone, head scratches, and I will throw in me prized hat. But no more. So do not even think of asking. Okay. This bone, head scratches, me hat, and me ship. Just let me keep me booty. Tis all I have left. Fine! Fine! You can have it all! Just get me out of here, Pop, please! I am begging ye! Curse ye! On the prison planet, you can hear Rivet mention how the last time she broke out of this place was with Angela. <laughs> last time I broke out of this place was with Angela. Haven't seen her in a long time. Well, we haven't either, because Angela is another female Lombax from Ratchet and Clank going Commando, which was the one and only game she has appeared in. However, Rivet mentioning this could be a reference to Angela appearing in a future installment. Only time will tell. Now, let's check out some unlockables. You can switch out the bolts for various items, such as blue orbs, which some people think that they might be a reference to the blue orbs from the God of War series. Rupees, which are an obvious reference to the Legend of Zelda series, some overcharge strings from Sunset Overdrive, and lastly, gold coins, which some people think is a reference to gold coins from the Super Mario Bros. games. 
Some of the armor you tend to unlock through the game is references to older games armor sets. The Q-Force set, a reference to Captain Cork's squad or even possibly the game of Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal Assault in the PAL countries. The Captain Starshield set, a reference to Captain Starshield from Ratchet Deadlock. The Modder set, a reference to the armor that Ratchet had to wear in Dead Zone yet again from Ratchet Deadlock. The Commando Suit, a reference to the armor Ratchet wore in Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. And the Quest Set, a reference to the armor that Ratchet wore in Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty. One of the wrench skins you can find is a Key Skin, an obvious reference to Keyblades from the Kingdom Hearts series. Now, onto the Lorbs. Each one of these logs tend to reference another PlayStation game. Here are a few examples. Map, my first dimension today. Pretty standard stuff, except the colors there were so vivid, like, whoa. Uh, and there were these creatures. One of them even looked like a Lombax, but, but he had smaller ears, a mask, and a cane, and I think he was pulling some kind of heist? Whatever it was, it looked cool. Second dimension down, not as colorful as the first one, but the creatures were definitely stranger. Their bodies were made out of all these old relics, but, but they could break apart and still be alive. It was so wild, and, uh, and now I wish I had asked Caden for more time. I, I just want to learn the stories of all these dimensions. Third dimension was cubes, really, really smart cubes. <laughs> Don't know what else to say there, except that I might have to stop doing these for every dimension I visit, because there's a little bit less than an infinite amount left, and I could have mapped 32 in the time since I started talking. Okay, fine. I know I was going to stop doing these recordings, but I can carve out some time every once in a while. Just, I'm a genius. Dimension 31x7, not super different from home, but there were these creatures. One was firing a gun and spinning himself around every other second, while the other hung out on his shoulder doing live commentary. Oh, I wanted to hang out with them so badly. Dimension 242Y8, quite possibly the cutest dimension I've ever seen. Oh, the inhabitants were all made out of wool, I think. Uh, they could literally make anything. And there was a, a really pleasant voice following me around everywhere. Oh, it was incredible. Oh, and what's even better? I think I'm finally close to mapping my last dimension. Some of the trophies from this game reference other popular forms of media, such as... Sweet Sweet Victory could be a reference to the song Sweet Victory by David Esley. Aim to Misbehave could be a reference to the speech Malcolm Reynolds gives in Serenity. Lombox and Chill is a reference to the Netflix and Chill meme. Too Fucks Too Nefurious is a reference to the Too Fast Too Furious movie. And I'm assuming there's a few others, but I'll leave those for you guys to find. Let me know which ones you guys find down below in the comments. And lastly, one of the most popular easter eggs in this game comes from the random things that pop out of the secret weapon, the Rhino 8. The name of the weapon, Rhino, is an acronym for Rip You A New One, and each time this thing is fired, items and people from other dimensions pop out, such as the following.
And that's about all I got for you guys today. If I happen to miss any secrets or Easter eggs, please let me know down below in the comments. And if you happen to learn about a few new ones, make sure you leave a like and subscribe too, as I plan to make more secrets and Easter eggs in other games like this. Well, with all that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day today.